Hey folks, so today I'm going to talk about my installation of the Lynx dashboard for the DR650. Okay, so the first thing we probably want to talk about is why? Why do you need one of these? Well, um, as you probably know that I, every modification that I'm trying to do to the DR650 has a purpose rather than just adding things for bling's sake. So why did I want one of these? Well, I wanted more room on the dashboard for stuff, basically. Um, you know, there's not a lot of room um, as it is fixing everything to the handlebars. Um, I wanted a bit more room. One of the things that I really wanted was a voltage, a voltometer, um, something to show how much um, voltage there is in the system. Um, as you may know that um, the DR is not so great at recharging itself. Uh, so if you've got heated grips, a vest running, charging your phone, GPS, so you've got, you know, your lights running, so you've got everything running, drawing off that battery it's not going to be able to recharge itself. Um, the Stator, I think, um, is a little weak. Uh, and which is expensive to replace. I mean, you can get an upgraded one, I think, you know, 300 bucks or something like that. But uh, at the end of the day, I really just want to monitor how much charge is in the system to ensure that I'm not draining the battery as I'm riding. The second thing I wanted, of course, everyone wants this USB got a couple of usbs here and then i wanted some switches to be able to control um, more things on and off you know i mean imagine riding on a really really cold day you've got your vest on um the heated grips going and you know and and you find that okay well i'm, I'm drawing too much power here i'm gonna drain the battery before I arrive at my destination. And then at that point, you probably want to start switching things off, right? And uh, to, to get that volt, uh, the voltage back up so that it's um, not completely draining the battery. And then you'll see that I installed the Trail Tech. This is not the, the top model, which I forget what it's called. This is like the basic endurance. So it only tells, it only shows you the speed that you're going at, which is fine. And then that's just the original, what you may call it, you know, high beam, low beam indicator. And finally, I have another USB down the side here. And this one has a plug that, um, you know, comes on and off. You know, I think my, my pump, my um, tire pump plugs into this plug. Uh, you can put any options on these, right? So when you get it, it's pretty much blank. Um, and then I just bought these, you know, circle drill tools, whatever they're called, and just drilled circles, basically, and other things to fit everything on. Okay, so let me run through the wiring. This is the tricky bit, actually. Uh, but, you know, I started from zero. I kind of watched a few YouTube movies to figure out how to do this. Um, it's pretty simple once you know, you know. Um, Basically, you've got positive and negative, right? And it has to complete in a circuit. But, you know, you can watch YouTube movies to figure that out. It's not that hard. Um, but figuring out where everything goes and keeping everything neat, I think that was a bit of a challenge. So when you buy this dashboard, it comes with a relay. So a relay is kind of like a... Um, it's an external switch. It's, it's basically another switch, right? So this is connected to the key. So when the key's turned on, this activates and puts power through everything. When the key's off, this deactivates all the power, all the circuits. So that's all that does. It's relay. Um, the, it comes with a fuse box, which is great. So you can, you know, where the fuses are and um, basically unscrew a couple of bolts here when, when it's on your bike and check the fuses if something's short circuiting okay so what about tools what do you need to do this kind of work well as you can see i went kind of nuts on amazon here buying a whole bunch of tools it was trial and error because what i soon discovered is there's a lot of tools out there that are absolute shit that don't do the job right and it's kind of figuring out which tools you need that do do the job that don't cost too much 
Um, these these are really easy to get hold of. They're everywhere, but they're shit. They don't do the job right. Um, I yeah. I mean they they're kind of designed to do everything at once, but they don't do any one thing very good. You know what I mean? So that was a mistake. Pretty cheap though. Um, these work. So these are wire strippers. Again, these are easy to get everywhere. I got these from Bunnings here in Australia. Cheap. Uh, I bought these from J Car. These are crimpers um, for the end things here. You can see that uh, when you're joining wires together, you need um, these joiners. Well, different, many different types of joiners, and um, you need a way to sort of crimp them onto the wire. So I got these from J Car. Again, they were cheap, about twenty bucks. They kind of work, but not so great. Um, you can kind of get them to work, but yeah, they're a bit shitty actually to be honest Now these I got these on Amazon. They're made in Japan This is the shit these work really really well. I mean these are amazing They, they, they really do the job really really well um, And these were pretty good as well. I got these on Amazon um, They kind of do the trick these are ratchet uh, crimpers, ratchet crimpers, and um, yeah, these, these kind of work. Um, I got these which are wire cutters. Um, I soon discovered that you need something like this better than normal scissors because they're kind of sharp and they and they, they cut really uh, they cut wire really really well. Wire, um, black actually, that's brown, they didn't have black, but <laughs> so I'm using brown, but. Black is neutral usually on a motorbike um, or a car maybe uh, and red is positive so I'm using 10 amp wire which I think works for everything um, it's easy to work with and um, works well so let me talk a little bit about the different types of crimps that there are um, these are the ones that you need if you're serious about this kind of, you know, doing a good job. These are naked, <laughs> I think they're called. So they don't have any um, coverings on them, they're naked. Um, I don't know if they're actually called naked, but uh, these are the ones that you want. They come in different sizes. These ones, I bought these first and they're absolute shit, they're rubbish. These are garbage. I have no idea why they sell these. Um, so what they are is they're, they're connectors and they have this really hard shell on the outside, plastic shell. Uh, so when you crimp the wire on there, the first thing that happens is that this hard plastic just gets all bent and broken up and out of shape. Um, doesn't do a good job of crimping on the wire and so it's really easy to pull the wire out um, it's you can't heat shrink this in other words you can't apply heat to it and it shrinks down on the wire um, yeah these are just rubbish this is heat shrink um, this is something else that's needed for this type of work uh, what this does is it goes on the wire and shrinks down on it uh, important for motorcycles because you want everything to be as weatherproof as possible so this kind of you know tightens everything up okay so after a lot of stuffing around I think I finally got it and uh, yeah I'm just gonna turn it on and I mean it's looking pretty mean I reckon also got a chance to install the new handlebars which is looking pretty good as well so let's uh, turn it on and see what happens. Oh yeah, cool. All right, so um, voltage is showing pretty low. I don't know if that's because it hasn't been running for a while. This bike has just been sitting here with me pulling it to bits for a few weeks now. I'm working pretty slow. And uh, maybe the battery needs a bit of a charge. I don't know, or if that's simply resistance. 
Uh, but we'll, yeah, I mean, it should be showing 12 volts, obviously 12.6 would be ideal. I don't know if it's ever going to show you that. But, uh, okay, so let's see if the switches work. Yeah, look at that light. Um, yeah, the switch for the USB. Also working. That one's not connected, so that's not going to do anything. And, um, all right, cool. One thing that isn't working, that I couldn't get working, is this USB here, the Oxford one, and I don't know why it's not working. Um, I use these probes, uh, I don't know what they're called, but these are awesome. I mean, um, definitely if you want to get into motorcycle electrics, uh, you need one of these. But anyway, um, this allows me to test the voltage, I guess just like a regular multimeter, but this one also has the ability to fire um, voltage into things, which is fun. <laughs> but anyway, so if I just test this at the plug, it is showing uh, 11 volts as I'd expect, or should be 12, but once the battery's fully charged, hopefully 12. Um, but when I check inside here, it's only showing 8 volts, and I don't know if that's the cause of the problem, if it's supposed to show only 8 volts. Um, and so the problem is inside here, it's nothing to do with my wiring. So that's one of the great things about these is it enables you to isolate where that's coming from. So my understanding is that Oxford is a pretty decent brand. So I don't know what's going on here. I'll email them um, and see what they say. This cheaper version, um, which came with the dashboard, is working perfect um, lots of volts coming out of that um, and it's all um, yeah working pretty well so um, I'm going to continue to work on this there's um, a lot of things I have to clean up one thing that isn't installed yet is the bracket for the GPS up here and um, I just have to tidy a few things up everything's still loose and I have to deal with the wires and so on and I have to figure out how this connects to the wheel. Um, it uses a magnet, I think. Um, but so that's not connected. So, so yeah, it's um, looking pretty good. And I'll keep, oh yeah, and the other thing is, um, you can see with the key off, this line is still active, which is what I want. I want power when the key isn't in there. Um, plug my tire pump into here or something like that and pump tires up with the key knot in <laughs> I don't know if it really matters but yeah maybe I'll find a use for it all right so the DR650 thanks for watching